In this lesson, we're going to write linear costs, revenue, and profit functions. Modeling cost, revenue, and profit analysis. A company that produces t-shirts will break even, meaning no profit, no loss, as long as the revenue equals the cost. The value of X, the number of items produced and sold, where C of X is equal to R of X, is called the break-even point. Now, C of X is the cost function, and R of X is the revenue function. Let's use the data below to express a linear function. Now, notice that with the data that we're given, we're given the fixed cost, and the fixed cost represents expenses uh, that are the same no matter how many t-shirts that we sell. Uh, costs such as uh, rental costs or uh, taxes or the cost to uh, rent uh, equipment. Costs that stay the same regardless of how many t-shirts that we sell. Next you have your variable costs. Now your variable costs are expenses that will change with the number of items produced. And that's based on several things such as, you know, materials, for example. Let's say uh, to produce 100 t-shirts, it's going to cost you $10 in materials. Well, then that means if you want to sell 200 t-shirts, that is going to cost you $20 in materials. So again, uh, with variable costs, uh, the expenses will change based on uh, how, how many items that you have to produce. Uh, and then the price of the item. The price of the item is simply what you're selling the item for. In this case, the t-shirts are selling for uh, $20 a piece. So we're asked to find the cost function, the revenue function, and the profit function. We're going to call the cost function C of X. Let's call the, the revenue function R of X. And let's call the profit function P of X. So first to find the cost function, we are given the cost in our table. Uh, so we have our variable cost, which is $11. And that's based on how many t-shirts you sell. So that's going to be 11x. X is the number you sell. 11x plus you have the fixed cost there as well. So your cost function is going to be C of X equals 11x plus 180. Now let's find our revenue function. Our, our revenue is... Um, money that we uh, take in that we gain and so if we sell the shirts for $20 uh, our revenue then is going to be uh, 20x $20 and x going to represent however many uh, number of t-shirts that we sell so r of x equals 20x last we have our profit function and our profit function is um, anything that we incur after we take out how much it costs us to produce it. So to find the profit function, it is merely you're going to uh, subtract your cost from your revenue that you got in. The money that you got in, you, you got to subtract the cost from that. And then you'll be able to tell what your profit is. So P of X equals R of X minus C of X. So in this instance, let's go ahead and find out uh, what our profit function, uh, solve it, our profit equation. So we have our revenue, which is 20X minus our costs, which is 11X plus 180. All right, now you should know by now when you're uh, solving anything involving polynomials, uh, because this group here has a negative in front of, in front of it, we're going to change everything inside to its opposite. So the 11x is going to become negative 11x. The 180 is going to become negative 180. 
So once we do so, the next thing we're going to do is just simply combine like terms. And once we do that, our profit function is 9x minus 180. Now we were not asked to solve anything, but just to find the various functions which we have. So here you have the cost function, uh, the revenue function, and the profit function. Now again, to find the profit, you have to um, subtract your cost from your revenue from what you took in. Now the last thing we need to find from this t-shirt company is the break-even point and then decide whether the product should be produced uh, based on these findings. So the break-even point, recall, is where there's no um, profit or no loss, okay? You just break even. And to find that, you have to set the cost function equal to the revenue function. So we found the cost and both the revenue function from the previous page. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug uh, those values in and set them equal to each other. So there we have our cost function, which is 11x plus 180. And on the right side, we have our revenue function, which is 20x. So to solve for x here, we're going to go ahead and combine like terms, get the x's together. Uh, so I'm going to move 11x over on the side with the 20. So let's go ahead and subtract 11x from each side. Last step to solving this is to divide by 9 and x equals 20. So what that means is 20 is our break-even point and that so this t-shirt company needs to sell at least 21 or more shirts to make a profit. Now, if they get sale just 20, they break even and there's no loss, no gain. Um, but in order to receive a profit, yes, they need to sell at least 21 or more uh, T-shirts in order to make a profit. So that's a break even point. In this next example, we are asked to find the cost, revenue, and profit function, as well as the break-even point for a small local business. So here we're given the data, the fixed cost of $1,650, a variable cost $400, and the price of the item is $305. So let's start with the cost function, C of X equals, well, we're going to start with our variable cost, which is 400 uh, times the number of items that are sold. So that would be uh, 400x uh, plus our fixed cost of $650. Uh, our revenue function, to get our revenue function, is the price of the item times however many items that are sold. So our revenue function R of X would then equal 305 X. Lastly, we want to find our profit function, our profit function. To find that, uh, we're going to have to subtract all the money that we put in to uh, making the item. Uh, and then whatever is left over, that would be our uh, profit. So to find the profit, you're going to subtract the cost from the revenue. Let's go ahead and do that. Recall that because that group has a negative in front of it, we're going to change those terms to their opposites. So it's going to become negative 400x minus 1650. Next, you're going to combine like terms. And there you have the profit function. Now, the last thing we want to find for this company is the break even point and decide whether the product should be produced based on the findings. So, recall to find the break even point, you're going to set the cost function equal to the revenue function. So let's go ahead and plug in those functions and set them equal to each other. 
When we do so, it's going to look like so. Our next step then is to uh, subtract negative 305x from each side so that we can combine like terms. That's going to give us 95x equals negative 1650. To solve for x, I need to divide by 95. So negative 1650 divided by positive 95 is going to give me an output of negative 17.37. And since our break-even point is a negative, that represents a loss, which suggests that this product should not be produced since it is impossible to make a profit. Okay, Richard is starting a business selling model trains. He plans to sell the model trains for $35 each. The costs for making the trains are a fixed cost of $200 and a production cost of $15 a piece. So let's identify what our cost function is. We're going to let our cost function be C of X, our revenue function R of X, and our profit function P of X. So if we look at our table of values, we have two costs associated with this business. Uh, we have the fixed cost of 200 plus we have the variable cost of $15 for each piece uh, in terms of the production. So that's going to be 15x, 15 for each piece. So 15x plus the $200 fixed cost, that will be my cost function. My revenue, the money that uh, we take in, that we get from selling, uh, if we sell them at $35 a piece, uh, that's $35 for each piece. Each piece is your X value, so that would be uh, 35X for my revenue. So R of X would be equal 35X. Lastly, for my profit function, for your profit function, you are simply going to take your revenue function and subtract your uh, cost from, uh, function from it. So it's going to be uh, 35x uh, minus uh, my cost of 15x plus 200. Now because that group uh, 15x plus 200 have a negative in front of it, recall what a negative does, uh, it negates everything inside. So uh, when you rewrite it, you're going to have negative 15x minus 200. Last step now then is to uh, combine like terms, and that's going to give you uh, 20x minus 200, and that is uh, your profit function. Okay, so the last thing we need to find for this small business owner is his break-even point. So recall the break-even point is where the cost function is equal to the revenue function. So let's go ahead and write these two functions, set them equal to each other. Once we do so, it's going to look like so. My next step, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 15x from each side. Lastly, divide by 20 and x equals 10. So Richard's break-even point is 10, which means anything that he sells more than 10 uh, will be considered as a profit. And there you have it. Now the break-even point can also be found by simply graphing the two functions. So the cost function and the revenue, uh, if you were to put them into your uh, graphing calculator, uh, it's going to look like so. And we can see here that the point uh, where these two lines, these two linear equations to where they intersect, uh, that is what we consider uh, the breaking point. Okay, so uh, they intersected at uh, 10, uh, comma 350. So the x value is 10. That's how many uh, model trains that he would have to sell and my y value of 350 and that would be the amount cost uh, the amount so uh 10 at least 10 trains the cost would be 350 dollars so that's just simply though the break-even point of course if he wants to make a profit that means he's going to have to 
sell more than 10. Uh, in other words, he's going to have to have earnings that are greater than $350. Uh, so if you'll see that uh, when you have that intersection, so anything then that's greater, notice to the right, that's where your profit's going to come in. And anything that you sell less than that uh, then would represent uh, a loss. So yes, just so that you know, there is another way of finding the break-even point. You can simply graph your two linear equations and wherever they touch or intersect, uh, that would be the break-even point. And so once you get that point, anything greater would be considered a profit and then anything less would be considered a loss.